Well, we are now getting ready to start tabbing our solar cells. Now, first thing you're going to do is you're going to need to cut your tabbing wire to the right length. Now, some solar cells come pre-tabbed, and what that usually entails is solar cell already has its basic tab on it, and it leaves off just a tiny little bit. Um, I don't have those, so I'm not going to demonstrate how to do those cells. What I am going to demonstrate is how to properly do uh, untabbed cells. And so since we are using a 6 inch by 6 inch cell, we're going to need to make solar cell, uh, the tabbing wire twice the length of the solar cell, because remember, it's got to come out long enough to go under and attach to the back side of the next cell, so you can go so on and so forth. So, so given that this is a six inch cell, we will need the tabbing wire to be just a hair over 12 inches long. A very, very simple way to measure it out because you're going to need a lot of individual strands of tabbing wire. Each cell is going to have its own strand. So, what you can do is take a piece of cardboard, cut it to the needed length, in this case, about a quarter inch longer than the length needed, because remember you got to leave just a tiny hair of a space in between each cell. So, I got it at about 12 and a quarter inches. Now, you can use a nice stiff piece of cardboard to do this. Um, now, usually you don't un unravel and do that many at a time. I did it because I don't usually have time to sit there and do it otherwise. What you do is just, you wrap it around. And uh, obviously this would still be on the spool, which would make it a lot easier. And every time you wrap it around, that measures out the approximate distance, or approximate length that you need. And you don't have to be scientific or perfect. It can be off within a quarter inch. It's close enough. We're not making, we're not making, you know, a $500 solar panel here. We're making a, I don't know, I guess it'd be about a $50 solar panel, maybe less, depending on where you get your cells from. So... Now, we already got one length here, all set to go. Now, if you have yourself a nice pair of scissors or snips, uh, first I'm going to cut off this extra little bit. Don't need that. I'll use that for another project. So now, for our first piece, our first 12 inches, take it off there. Where the bend was, snip. There you go. Straighten it out. Make sure clean, non oily hands, or you can use a very clean, non fabric softener. I just want to straighten it out. course because it's still got the bend in there including on the spool. Just up there for example, and here's the other one. Just what we need. Uh, so you're going to want to do that if, if you have the time. Sit and pre-cut all the pieces you need. There's no reason not to. No. Well, maybe. Now, not every cell is going to use a, the full double size because as you're going across the panel when you get to the end you're going to have to attach a, uh, a bus tab and uh, so you'll only need maybe a half inch of uh, tab wire coming off the back end uh, because then you're going to use your thick bus wire to connect one row to the next row uh, So. If you have multiple spools, 
at least maybe cut out what you need to do all the cells you got uh, initially. So, uh, I'm gonna I'm, I'm working on my editing skills a little bit. So I'm gonna cut here. I'm gonna get prepared to uh, to tab a cell for you guys. All right, now we're gonna be doing some tabbing. Now uh, this is I've only done a total of maybe four cell yeah four cells so far. So uh, I am fairly new to this. I'm getting the hang of it pretty quick. Um, yes, you will break cells. I broke one, shattered it horrendously. However, even though I did break it, um, I use that as a good practice one. Uh, so, right now, here we go. Um, I already did one, one tab on, on this cell. And we're going to do the second one. Now I found a good starting point. Always make sure you have a uh, clean, clean tip. Take your uh, rosin flex pen. Try to touch the uh, top of your solar cell as little as possible. Mark down the path you want to go, and the area you're going to solder. Get your wire ready. Now, uh, something I found that makes it easier, take a tiny dab of solder. Put it right there at the end. And then take your uh, tabbing wire. And yes, I am aware I did screw up right now. I don't know if you can see from the video. I got a little solder on the uh, solar collection portion. What you do. One thing to watch out for, uh, your holder for your soldering pin. That will also get hot. Wow, did not see that coming. Okay, lovely. So, by uh, putting a tiny little piece there, that holds down an end, end of the wire. Now, we can get this. I gotta modify that a bit. I'm gonna be very careful. Don't burn yourself. These pens are a hot couple hundred degrees. And now that little bit of solder you put in there, you just slowly drag that. Don't go too fast or your pen will cool down and you won't get enough solder drain. I'm still perfecting this. Spend the money on a better soldering iron. I'm going to have to modify this one just a wee bit. The pen keeps getting loose. 
wiggling too much, so I will have to modify that. It shouldn't be too bad. Very gentle with your uh, solar cells. And that looks like it's on there. There we go. We have one completed cell. And uh, what I'm going to recommend doing is uh, do enough cells to go down one length of your panel, whatever direction it's going to go. And then once you have enough for that, then you can flip them over and actually start interconnecting them all. Now, I am going to uh, do, let's see, we're going to need, uh, this panel is, uh, 39 inches long, so 3 inches more than 3 feet, but since our cells are 6 inches, uh, we'll leave it at, uh, we can only do so many cells in a row, so uh, three feet, we'll, we'll say, we'll round down to three feet, six cells, six inches per cell, which means uh, we have six cells we're going to need. Um, so I am going to go ahead and tab uh, five more cells. And uh, we'll come back to the next video, and then uh, we'll tab uh, to interconnect them all and tab the, uh, the back sides. Because remember, most cells, uh, the side that faces the sun is the negative side. And uh, that, so these, these leads coming off right now, the tabs, are actually negative. The back side of the cell, this side with these tabs, that's actually the positive side there since I'm going to work on that one anyways. And uh, these cells are one half volt cells. Slightly. There's the underside for positive, top side for negative. And inside a dark, nice dark warehouse, we're still getting a quarter volt. Uh, now, when I took one outside earlier, I was actually getting 0.6 volts. So, right now in the sunshine, this one little cell, this one little cell is putting out five, approximately five watts at one half volt. So, once we add a second cell, solder them together, we'll have 10 watts at 1 volt. And as you keep adding, so then once we, since we're going to be doing 6 here, that would be 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 watts at 3 volts. And just keep compounding like that. Uh, Due to the uh, size of glass that I have um, and the size of the cells, uh, this panel will only be a 12 volt panel. Uh, once you hit, factor in direct sunlight, uh, this panel should should be uh, it'll probably hit about 14 to 16 volts. Uh, a little on the low side, 
if you find that a single panel puts out too low of a voltage for your, say, your grid tie inverter or to be able to charge a battery pack, uh, you can always uh, combine multiple cells or uh, multiple panels in a series. So I could use two of the same size panel, and uh, that would end up being uh, 24 volts. And uh, my invert, my grid tie inverter actually accepts 25, 24 volts just fine. It rather likes 24 volts. So I might have to combine two of these panels. Now, uh, let me get my uh, calculator here. Uh, for me, because this is going to be, let's see, it's three feet long, two feet wide. So. That's six square feet, and we can do four panels, because remember they're six inches. So we can do uh, four panels. Per square foot. So we'll take four times six. Gives us 24 uh, cells. So we're going to have 24 of these cells to make up this one panel. And then we take 24, multiply that by 5 watts per panel, and then this panel, um, this panel will end up being 120 watts at 12 volts. So obviously, if we uh, put it in a series with another panel, that would double the voltage up to 24 volts, and that would be 240 volt watts at 24 volts. Likewise, then we double it again and add two, two or more si of this size panel. We'll be at uh, 480 watts at uh, 40, that'll be 48 volts. But then again, when you get up, instead of increasing the voltage at that point, you could put them in parallel, then you'd also have the, the 480 watts but you can have the 480 watts at 12, uh, 24 volts. Likewise, you could take two of these and uh, have them in parallel. You'd still have 12 volts then, and then 12 volts at the 240 watts. Uh, now, if you're going to be using a, uh, a charging some sort of lead acid battery, uh, make sure you use a uh, charge controller. Now most of these kits do include the diodes which prevent uh, the battery from going back into and discharging into your solar panel which would just waste everything as heat. Uh, though for safety's sake you should use a charge controller. Keep your battery life much longer, keep your solar panel life much longer, more efficient charging. And the solar, oh excuse me, uh, solar charge controller is only, you can get them as low as $25, $30. Not very bad at all. So I'm going to go ahead and complete five more of these. And then, uh, once we have five of them, then I will show you guys uh, tabbing uh, cell to cell and uh, flipping them over, thus creating our first our first string in this panel and we can also add uh, the bus wire so there we go see you guys in the next part so, uh, I guess that would end up being part three because I'm going to join the uh, cutting the tabbing wire and this one but you knew that already because you already watched it <laughs> it's kind of like time travel with these videos so I go ramble again. and um, if anybody has any specific questions, don't hesitate to message me or ask. As usual, I'm always happy to answer questions. Uh, oh, uh, and it's a lot easier working on a on a glass surface. Yes, I know I'm using my uh, my panel glass. I really am not happy that I'm using that, but um, I don't have enough work room here to be able to use to have another glass plus since this is somewhat of an experiment for me too at least I can have a full size mock up and measure things out a lot easier so there you have it see ya